Hey guys, so welcome to my third and hopefully last in the series of my review videos on Heather's the Musical. Now as you can see, this one's I'm going to focus all on the songs in the show. Now as there is an original cast recording of the US version available online, I could probably do this review independent of the show. However, a lot of the songs I enjoy more because of the show, and there's also three new songs in the UK version that didn't feature in the US version. Now, with that being said, I do recommend trying to listen to the original soundtrack, just so you have a better idea about what I'm talking about with some of the songs. So I guess we should do this in order. So the first song we see in the show is Beautiful. This is also the longest song in the show. It's a diary entry by Veronica Sawyer, and it serves to introduce us to some of the characters, as well as Veronica's views on high school. This song gives an insight into the hell that is high school. The cliques, the bullying, the name-calling, all of it. Now, during the course of the song, the word beautiful is used in two contexts. For the majority of the song, we see Veronica singing about how she wishes life would be beautiful. In this sense, she means beautiful simply to be kind. Now, during the course of the song, she meets the Heathers and as a result gets a makeover. So, towards the end of the song, in the final verse, when she's singing about being beautiful, it's no longer about being kind, but more looking beautiful, more in a superficial manner. I think this is a good setup for the story, simply because it shows how quickly Veronica was willing to drop her views about being kind and more about how being popular. Now the second song in the show is called Candy Store, which is sung by the Heathers. Now this is simply the Heathers giving Veronica a choice. A little background, just before the song, the Heathers want to play a trick on Martha. Now although Veronica is now friends with them and is going along with her plan for the most part, she doesn't want this to go ahead. She knows it's wrong and unfair to pick on Martha. So the Veronicas are simply giving Veronica a choice. They tell her everything good that can happen to her if she's friends with them and popular. She, they're also telling her exactly what's going to happen to her if she doesn't go along with their plan. It also gives an insight into how the Heathers see the world. For them it's all about drinking, drugs and being popular. The way they see the world, or at least high school, is if you're not popular it's not worth living. Now the next song, which follows reasonably soon after the candy store, is called Fight For Me. Now this is where we're introduced to the character of JD. Now while JD is busy fighting Kurt and Ram, Veronica is singing this song. Is Veronica having an instant crush on JD and asking would he be willing to fight for her? Although Veronica is now popular, she still sees it as people not wanting to be seen with her. One of the lines within the song is her asking JD would he be willing to be seen with her. So the next song on the list is JD's song, Freeze Your Brain, which is all about his love for the 7-Eleven. Now, for anyone who's not familiar with the character, JD, at a young age, witnessed his mother commit suicide and has been forced to constantly move around the country with his abusive father. As far as he sees it, the 7-Eleven is the only constant good thing in his life. He's also home to his favourite drink, Slurpee. Now, one of the reasons he loves Slurpee so much is his abil its ability to give you brain freeze. As he says in the song itself, he loves to fight pain with more pain. As far as he sees it, Slurpee helps to numb the pain he feels in his life. And that's simply what this song is about. Now, on the surface, it seems quite light-hearted, but the more you read into the lyrics, the more you see just how dark it really is. Now, the next song, which comes immediately after Freeze Your Brain, is that of Big Fun. Now, this is a big party scene within the show. Now, Big Fun is simply an upbeat, catchy, fun song, ultimately, that involves the entire cast. And the melody to which is probably the one I have stuck in my head the most, after I saw the show. Now the next song we get to hear is that of Deco Walking. During the party, Veronica got in a fight with Heather Chandler. Now Heather Chandler threatened to make her life miserable come Monday morning. So this song is all about Veronica deciding what to do with her last 30 hours. She's the start of the song starts out with Veronica weighing up her options. Does she stick around those 30 hours? Or does she run for it? As she's po walking around pondering her, op her situation, she finds herself in front of JD's house. It's then she has the realisation just how she wants to spend her last 30 hours before Monday morning, which is simply getting freaky. The rest of the song we see her doing just that. Now I have to admit, this song, or at least the hook, to it is probably the one I find stuck in my head quite a lot. Now the next song up is that of The Me Inside of Me. 
little spoiler in context for you. The following day, Veronica goes to Heather Chandler's house to apologise and inadvertently ends up poisoning her. Now JD convinces her to forge a suicide note. This song is simply what is written in that note. Now although Veronica had intended the note to make Heather Chandler sound more deep and troubled, it does contain quite a few funny lines. And the song and scene itself do end up having a bit more of a tragic but yet comedic side to it and ultimately it leads to the other characters within the show falling even more in love with Heather Chandler. So the next song we come to is one of the new songs, You're Welcome. Now this has replaced Blue from the original version. Now I personally prefer You're Welcome to the original song. Now the theme is still the same but I think there's a bit more of a message in it. Now this song takes place between Cram and Veronica. It is Kurt and Ram trying to convince Veronica that she should have sex with them. However, for, for Veronica's point of view, it's her trying to think of a way out of it. Now, as Kurt and Ram see it, any girl would be honoured to sleep with them. They see it as a reward for Veronica and now she is popular. However, Veronica clearly doesn't see it the same way. Ultimately, while the two boys are arguing with who, about who Veronica should get with first, she is able to come up with an executed plan and ultimately comes out on top of the situation. Now this next song we get to hear is another new song which is called Never Shut Up Again. Now this is Heather Duke's solo which she never got in the original show. This song is all about Heather Duke coming into power. About how she fills Heather Chandler's shoes and the red scrunchie. It's, about, it's her telling us just how long she's been waiting for her time to come and now it's, it is here, she's not going to waste it. It's also where we get to see Heather Duke fulfil Heather Chandler's promise of making Veronica's life miserable. She makes her the laughing stock of the school with the help of Kurt and Ram as they spread a rumour about what happened the night before. This ultimately leads to Veronica in tears and it shows just how far Veronica D just how far Heather Duke is willing to go to maintain her power. Now we come to the final song in Act 1, which is Our Lover Go is God. Now this is a duet between JD and Veronica. Is JD telling Veronica just how much she means to him, how important she really is, and how the two of them can change the world for the better. Now, during the course of the song, we also see the two of them plot and execute their revenge on Cram, and is ultimately where we see the two, those two characters get killed. Now, the first song we get to hear in respect to the second act is called Prom or Hell. This is a small solo song by Veronica. It's her starting to regret her the part she's played in the death of her classmates. It also serves to reinforce her message from the start of the show. Like she says, Kurt and Ram are jerks, however they did have the potential to be good later on. Now they're dead, they, we'll never know if that was going to happen. Now the first real song and the first official song in the second act is called My Dead Gay Son. Like I've said previously, Kurt and Ram get killed in the first act and this is their funeral. This song is sung by their dads and is them reacting to the news that their sons were gay. Now although it's mostly sung by Ram's dad, eventually Kurt's dad does come round to the idea and ends up joining in. Now it is set in a funeral and is meant to be a sad time in the show, however the song is extremely upbeat, over the top and humorous and the dance and scene that go with it are just hilarious. And one of the many reasons that I love the song. Next up we have JD and Veronica's big duet in the, in the show called Seventeen. Now this is Veronica asking JD if they can be normal teenagers, if they can stop playing God and by deciding who lives and dies and just do what other teenagers do. Can they go see movies, can they sneak beers and just go camping? Now although the events that have led up to this song are somewhat tragic and dark, the song itself is actually quite a sweet song. It is the two of them telling each other how important they are to one another, how they choose each other and how they just want to be with one another. Next up we have what's probably my favourite song in the show which is Miss Fleming's song Shine a Light. It's funny, it's light hearted and has a very important message. It's probably also one of the most catchy songs in the show because I know it's the one I had stuck in my head the most after I first went to see it. Now I've already talked a little bit about it in previous videos but I will talk about it again now. This song is set in a special assembly held by Miss Fleming with the help of some of the students to try and prevent further suicides in the school. It's her telling the students that they all have fears and shames but if they're willing to share them that it'll lift the weight and the control that they have over them. Now one of the reasons I love this song so much is because of what happens during the show. 
During the song, Miss Fleming asks for a volunteer to share what they're ashamed of. When no one comes forward, she goes first. Now her secret is that she's been having an affair with a man named Steve. At this point, she then picks on a random member of the audience to be her Steve so she can break up with him. Now obviously this is going to be different every night, but every night has the same result, i.e. applause and laughter from the audience. Another reason I love this song so much is because of the message it has. It doesn't matter who you are, we all have insecurities and things we're afraid of. And things that are weighing us down. Now, I'm not saying go tell your entire school or announce on national TV like it is done during the show, but it's very important that we try to share these fears with people, even if it's just a friend. As soon as Shine Light ends, Heather McNamara steps forward to reveal her fear in the form of the song Lifeboat. Now, up until this point, Heather McNamara has been a very happy, bubbly kind of character. However, during this song, we see how far from the truth that really is. As far as Heather McNamara is concerned, she is afloat in an ocean with no hope in sight. It's an extremely vulnerable and sad song and it comes at a very important point in the show. Now immediately after Lifeboat ends we see Heather McNamara run to the toilet to try and take an overdose. Now don't worry, Veronica gets to her in time and manages to stop her. Whether it does give us the next song in the show which is Shine a Light Reprise. This is sung by the other students in the school. It is basically the thoughts Heather McNamara has been having and her opinion on what the other students are saying about her. Now although it is a very brief song, it is very effective in getting across just how dark Heather McNamara's thoughts have been. Now we come to another new song in the show, so new in fact it only got added 12 shows from the end of the run. Now if you're familiar with the story, you know that during the course of the show JD has a fight with his dad in the presence of Veronica and ends up shooting out a TV. It's at this point Veronica realises just how messed up JD really is. It doesn't matter how much she tries to change it or how much she promises to change, he's always going to be twisted. Now, in previous versions, it is, this has simply been a scene where the two characters argue and Veronica ends up breaking up the relationship. However, in the UK version, a song has now been put into this scene called I Say No. Now, this song is about Veronica realising just how blinded by love she has been when it comes to JD. She realises just how toxic he has been for her and that she needs to end it before it's too late. This isn't just Veronica ending the relationship, this is her telling JD just why she's ending it. Now I really like the message in this song. Is Veronica having a reawakening to her situation? Like any of us, it's very easy to get caught up in a relationship, be that romantic or otherwise. It is only when we're able to step back from the situation do we realise just how bad it's been for us. Now this is a very heartbreaking song as having to watch Veronica go through this realisation, however it is a victory for her. Is her now realising this relationship is bad and I say no more to it. Now the next song on the list is less of a song and more of a chant. It is the school chant, Hey Yo Westenberg. It is simply used to pep up the characters within the show and is used during a transition sh scene during the show. Like I said, it's short but very upbeat. Next we come to the most heartbreaking song in the show, which is Martha's solo Kindergarten Boyfriend. Now up until this point in the show, Martha's been a little naive just to how much her fellow students don't care about her. Now it's events that lead just prior to this song that lead to her realising tr this sad truth. Now I've already given you a little background in previous videos but I will go over it again now. Martha has had a crush on Ram Sweeney for the last 12 years since they shared a kiss on the kickball field in kindergarten. Now she truly believes that he still has feelings for her and that that kiss meant more to him than just a childish kiss. During the course of the song we s see just how much the kiss meant to her. Now that Ram's dead, she realises what a fantasy she's been living in. This song gives an insight into the dream world she's been living in prior to her bubble getting burst. And spoiler, it's also the build up to her trying to commit suicide. This is because she'd rather live in the dream world she created than live in the real one any longer. Like I said, this song is kind of odd, a little quirky and almost stalkerish in some of its lyrics. However, ultimately it is truly heartbreaking to listen to. Next we have the song Yo Girl, which comes right after Veronica has found out about Martha's failed suicide attempt. It is Veronica's world starting to unravel. It is sung by the three dead students and is meant to represent her inner turmoil and her spiral out of control. She realises just how troubled and out of control she has become. She also realises she's no, lo no better than the students she helped kill. There is also a sense of fear in this song in regards to JD. She knows even though she has ended things with him, he's going to keep coming back for her over and over again, which terrifies her. 
Speaking of JD, he has the next song in the show, which is the song Meant To Be Yours. Now it's at this point JD is truly snapped and reveals his plans to blow up the school. It's also him trying to win Veronica back. Although she's broken up with him, he truly believes that they are meant to be together. Although she's hurt him like everybody else in his life, she, as far as he's concerned, she's still his. Now, during the course of this song, we see just how unstable JD is, or already was. Now, a little spoiler and context in regards to the show. During the entire scene, Veronica has been hiding from JD in her closet. Towards the end of the song, JD breaks into the closet to find out that Veronica has hung herself. Now, don't worry, Veronica's fine, but let's carry on. Now, it's only when he sees Veronica's motionless body that he has a brief moment of clarity. He sees what his actions have done. However, this is fleeting. If anything, it makes him more determined to go through with his plan. If anything, to honour Veronica. As far as he's still concerned, it is the school that's led to her killing herself. Now, after we've seen that Veronica only faked her suicide, we get the next song in the show, which is Dead Girl Working Reprise. Now this is no longer about Veronica getting her freak on, but more about her trying to fix the mess she's caused. It also shows that she still has her sense of right and wrong. She knows that she needs to right the wrongs her and JD have done. She knows that ultimately the only way to stop JD is to end his life and ultimately hers. We see her go from her home to the school and ultimately confront JD in the boiler room. She tries to convince him to not go ahead with his plan, but ultimately this leads to the two of them fighting and concludes with a gunshot. Next we have another short song in the show, which happens immediately after the fight. JD is now unconscious or dead and Veronica needs to find a way to stop the bomb. The only thing she can think of is to drag her as far away from the building as possible before it explodes, potentially taking her with it. However, JD finds her. When he sees that she is willing to die for the students he wants to kill, he finally decides to do something good. Now, during this time, he sings the song I Am Damage. It is all about him realising just how damaged beyond repair he really is, but also the fact that Veronica can still be saved from ending up the same way. As JD sees it, he's already shot and going to die anyway, so he doesn't see why Veronica should go die also. He decides to show just how much she really means to him by sacrificing his life to save hers, not just physically but metaphorically too. He knows the only chance Veronica has of ever being good in this world is for him to no longer be in it. Now we do hear Veronica during the song try to convince him out of this, but ultimately even she knows this is the only option they have. Now we come to the final song in the show. Now this happens right after the explosion has gone off. Veronica decides to make a change there and then. She walks into the school and takes the red scrunchie, therefore taking control of the school. She then tells the other students it's time for them to stop being evil and start being kind. It's time for them to stop worrying about what may or may not happen and go back to being friends and kind to one another. Go back to being just kids because soon it might truly be too late. Now, I think this is an excellent song not only to end the show on, but has an excellent message too. There's enough evil in this world without us adding to it. If we all took the time to be kind to one another, this world really could be a beautiful place. So that's it guys, we've finally come to the end of my review videos on Heather's Musical. I can't believe that I had so much to say that it actually took up three videos. Sorry about that. And if you have made it to the end of this one, congrats for making it through all my pointless rambling. Now. I hope after all these videos you can see just why I like the, sh the show so much as do many other people. I Once again I do highly recommend going to see the show if you get a chance. I know I have plans to go back a few more times before it ends on November 24th. So yeah guys, I get that is now the end of this little series and I will see you in my next video.